Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video I will show you the Hierapolis here in Pamukkale, Turkey. Let's tour it together. Oops. So it's a double wall too. Wow, how big is it? Oh, right? This is the origin of this one. Hello everyone, welcome to Pamukkale where you can find the Hierapolis and the Cotton Castle or the Thermal Hot Spring. What you can see is the Pamukkale Travel Tins or the Pamukkale Thermal Spring and this is one of the entrances towards the Hierapolis. You need a pass or a ticket to go inside. So this is where the walking hiking starts and if you want to walk wherever then you have to take off your shoes if not then you have to follow the brown stuff so it's better to do, take off the shoes and go anywhere than walk on a limited spot let's do the hiking so i took off my sleeper uh, shoes and here the decoration it looks like a snow from far away but it's not it's a uh, mineral formations on the mountain from the thermal hot spring So not too many people right now because it's uh, springtime and today there's not much visitors so limited people and we almost uh, own the area so it's it's nice it's not crowded so that's the canal for the water running from top to bottom It's nice to walk, you know, just relaxing. 
take your time, no rush, enjoy the moment, no, no rush going anywhere. Just take a deep breath and relax, enjoy nature. So from here you can see the Pamukkale area. Few people there. It's overcast but it's not raining so that's good. Look at those uh, formation right? Look at them, they're holding their shoes too. Why walk on a limited space when you can walk anywhere by just removing your shoes? So take up your shoes and walk anywhere. So that's the bottom part, bottom area, and up, that's the other side. It's a huge area. This is the main walkway and if there's a certain area that you can yeah. go, there's a line on it, you can't pass that line because it's dangerous. So there's a group of people there testing the water and holding each other hands because sometimes it's slippery so try not to sleep. So almost at the top of the travel things. water there there we go I'm trying it I'm trying not to sleep on the floor and you can see the steam coming out from the water there
time to sit down and dry my feet there's some benches there and you can sit on the platform to dry your feet just be careful in this area because it's really slippery That's enough. In there. I saw lots of uh, people and uh, ended on the floor or ended on the ground yeah. when you're in Turkey this is one of the areas that you must visit and when you're on top this white formation shape like a uh, wing there's the hot air balloon flying on top so when you're on that hot air balloon you can see from top the shape of this white formation it's a wing shape or wings shape yeah it's nice you know it's interesting how did that happen and how it's shaped like that who knows lots of hot air balloon flying today so it is a good day lots of hot air balloon right now so that's good that means lots of tourists it's good enjoying the moment here in Pamukkale Travertine is a form of terrestrial limestone deposited around mineral springs, especially hot springs. It often has a fibrous or concentric appearance and exists in white, tan, cream-colored, and even rusty varieties. It is formed by a process of rapid precipitation of calcium carbonate, often at the mouth of a hot spring or in a limestone cave. In the later, it can form stalactites, stalagmites, and other spelluterms. It is frequently used in Italy and elsewhere as a building material. So I'm on top of the travel teens and there's a board pathway or walkway to go around the area. It's nice. You know, you can see it from top to bottom. Although you can just see the shape of it when you're up in the hot air balloon or doing the paragliding just like I did.
Unless you fail. Don't go up. Go to the top. Behind me is the theater here at the Hierapolis of Prekria and that's the one that I will be exploring now. Let's go.
So this is the incubation chamber. After the period of fasting, prayers, sacrifices, and purifying baths in the thermal spring waters, they descended into the two chambers for the rite of incubation. There are stone benches on which the worshippers spend the night. The god Pluto appeared to them in dreams, during which they received prophecies and their diseases were healed. So this is the Theatron and the iconic portico, which was built second half of the first century AD. So this is the ritual theater. Built a rectangular plan from which about 800 worshippers could observe the rites that took place in front of the cave, the sacrifice of the bull suffocated by the gases, and the entrance into the cavity by the unit's priest of Cybele. The only ones able to do so without being killed by the fumes. It's the carbon dioxide. The worshippers were forbidden to access the area in front of the cave. Running along the top of the theater was an elegant, iconic portico, which was built during the reign of Nero.
Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video I will show you the Hierapolis here in Pamukkale, Turkey. Let's tour it together. Ancient texts related to Hierapolis are quite a few, but significant when they are associated with abundant archaeological evidence and allow us to describe an in-depth history of the city and the surrounding area. Probably founded by one of the successors of Alexander the Great, to pass into the hands of the kings of Pergamon in 188 BC with the peace of Apamea. Heropolis became one of the richest city in Asia Minor in Roman times as indeed shown by its monumental remain. Before the foundation, the plateau was affected by rare traces of prehistoric occupation witnessed by the discovery of fragments of obsidian and the likely development of a place of worship around the cave of Plutonium. The very name of the city, Hierapolis, meaning the holy city, because of the religious traditions arose around this sacred cave. This is the Frontinus so Gate, the which is the monumental Frontinus entrance to the Roman city this and leads the onto the large platea, 14 city. meters wide, which and crosses the whole the settlement, ex exiting a gate at the opposite wide, side the to connect with the road that goes to Laodicea onto the Lycos and then Colossi. Onto the two sides of the gate's facade is a monumental marble inscription originally attributed to the Caracalla. Yeah. Though following the research and partial restorations of the Italian archaeological mission may now be dated to AD 84 on the basis of the dedication to the Emperor Domitian in the year of his fourth Tribunicia Protestas or Tribune Magistrate and the 12th Consulate. The dedication is by Proconsul or Roman Governor of Asia Minor Sextus Julius Frontinus, famous Latin writer and author of the Treatise on Aqueducts. The Frontinus Gate will lead you to the Frontinus Street, a long stretch of road. It's the main road. This is the Frontinus Street, the principal street, 14 meters wide, was conceived as a part of unitary project together with a gate in the 1st century AD. It is paved and has a pavement. In its center runs the main drain, covered with large stone blocks. Along the sides are a number of buildings, including houses, shops, and warehouses. Unified by a travertine facade that is 170 meters long. A series of buildings of late date 5th to 6th century AD invades the road surface, in this period reduced to no more than 8 meters in width. A thick calcareous deposit, about 2 meters thick, formed through the runoff of spring water, covered the road surface. This is the latrine. This building was found in a state of collapse caused by an earthquake that has allowed its almost complete reconstruction. The building was reached by an entrance through the si two side doors. The room is divided longitudinally by a row of columns that supported a roof composed of travertine blocks. Along the two long sides ran a drain, sluicing the liquids into the cloaca beneath the Prontinus Street. Along the perimeter walls may be seen the groove into the seats with holes were fitted, and a small channel in which clean running water was available for hygiene. The paving is composed of travertine slabs that displays heavy signs of wear. The constructions of the building is dated to the end of the 1st century AD. Its collapse is dated by the painted inscriptions found on the half columns of its facade that bear acclamations to the Emperor Justinian.
behind me is the theater here at the Hierapolis of Prakriya and that's the one that I will be exploring now. Let's go. This is the entrance to the theater and as you will see, the theater is of impressive size and occupies four blocks. The cavea is divided into two parts by the central diazoma and vertically by eight staircases into nine kirkides. Above was the gallery of the Sama cavea. In the center of the Ima cavea or the lower seats is a large marble exedra with seats having lion paw terminals and high backs for persons of high status. The stage building is divided into a logion or the stage itself and a sena. The Sena fronts was divided into three superimposed orders, sitting upon a podium decorated with a figurative cycle dedicated to Apollo and Artemis. This building was erected in the 3rd century AD, during the reign of Emperor Septimus Severus, enveloping and cancelling an earlier theater, perhaps of Flavian date. The theater was used into late Roman times, and inscriptions dating to AD 352 cites the restorations of the Sena of France. So this is one of the staircase that is located in the middle. There you go. This is the middle one, and then you walk and you reach the top. There are some areas that are lack, and I saw that there's also stairs going down. I'm not sure what's inside in there because no one is allowed to go inside. Another staircase. And going down is prohibited. So we'll just into the middle. As I mentioned earlier, on the lower seats, that's the marble exedra that is reserved for the persons who have a higher status. It's made specially for them so they can see what's happening on the stage. And look how wide and huge that theater is. And that's the center of the theater, the stage. And that small pole on the very top, they said that there's another layer on top of that and they are still in the process of restoring it. It's amazing. And how they curved that marble or rocks before. It's a huge one. This is a marble portico opening onto the main road. The portico has an overall length of 62 meters and a height of about 5.5 meters. The rear wall with projecting pilasters is built of square travertine blocks. The facade is composed of Doric columns in white marble with a square pillar at each end. The architrave bears a dedicatory inscription. The monument, built in the first half of the first century AD, probably collapsed as a result of the earthquake of the 4th century AD. The architectural materials were covered by a large quantity of discarded debris. Subsequently, the area was covered by a thick layer of calcareous deposits left by the water that emerged farther uphill.
you can see those letters written on it. And there's some designs in there just like bull, like that one, that one, this one, bull, gold, and other stuff. It's just amazing how they did it a long time ago. Look at that. It's solid one. This is the church with pillars that was built 6th century AD. The building with a nave and two aisles also has a portico with pillars. The apse is flanked by two rooms, the prothesis and the diaconicon, the later serving as a sacristy. A noteworthy feature is the use of pillars of different sizes that divide the nave from the aisles thus substituting the colonnades used in the other churches, including the cathedral. Along the perimeter walls, there are a series of pilasters and the columns, corresponding to the larger and smaller pillars respectively. I'm here! This creates significant variations in the architectural forms, producing a series of vaulted ceilings of different sizes over the nave and the aisles. The western outer wall has a similar alternation of large and small pillars with pilaster of alternating widths supporting a series of blind arches. And that's me walking because it's better to see the view when you're in a higher ground. You can see what the building look, uh, look like. So, yeah, I was careful. I haven't seen anyone did it except me. But I love it. And that's me again. I want to try, you know, jumping up, but I decided not to or else I will be on the ground with broken bones. The Theatron and the Ionic Portico, a key element of the sanctuary is the ritual theater, built a rectangular plan from which about 800 worshippers could observe the rites that took place in front of the cave, the sacrifice of the bull suffocated by the gases, and the entrance into the cavity by the eunuch priest of Cybel, the only ones able to do so without being killed by the fumes. So this is the theater for their uh, ritual and that one there is the entrance to the cave it, it's made of uh, travertine blocks with ionic semicolons flanking the entrance to the cavity from which little, little fumes of carbon dioxide were emitted and thermal spring waters flowed. The entrance to the cave itself is marked by an arch bearing the dedicatory inscription to Pluto and his bride Cori, the ruling divinities of the underworld. Yeah, there you go. That's the entrance to the cave. So design. That's Pluto. The tree head dog there, guarding the gateway of the underworld. So this is the incubation in the plutonium. Rooms O and N were built over the fault and were linked to an initiation rites performed by the worshippers. After a period of fasting, prayers, sacrifices, and purifying baths in the thermal spring waters, they descended into the two chambers for the rite of incubation. 
in a room and there are stone benches on which the worshippers spent the night that God Pluto appeared to them in dreams during which they received prophecies and their diseases were healed. Look at that. And that's the one that they use to make an olive oil. Imagine how many people are pulling that one to rotate. It's amazing. Martyrium of St. Philip This church with an octagonal core was built at the beginning of the 5th century on the summit of the hill. This is probably where, according to tradition, the apostle was martyred. The building has an eight-sided central room surmounted by a wooden cupola. From each of the eight sides of the central space, there was access to a rectangular room through three arches supported by marble columns with capitals decorated with acanthus leaves. The shape of the central room is a reference to number eight which symbolizes eternity. The church is situated inside a square composed of 28 rooms for housing pilgrims which were accessed from the outside. As in other Byzantine sanctuaries associated with healing powers, example that of St. Cosmas and Damian in Constantinople, in this room, incubation rites were practiced. During sleep, the saint cured the sick and made prophecies concerning the future. Yes. Pilgrim's Fountain is the fountain where the pilgrims could perform their ablutions before entering the holy building. The fountain is composed of a tower 6.2 meter high. The Basilica Bath. Bath Basilica Complex was located on the north side of the city, out of the city gates. The bath was dated to the 3rd century AD, but later in the 6th century AD, an apse was added to the central part and it was turned into a church. This was an important sign of sensitivity of ancient Anatolian people about the cleaning and protecting against epidemics. Heropolis, where the area devoted to the burial of Heropolis inhabitants, spread out of the town along the access roads. Northwards, in the directions of the ancient Tripolis and Sardis, the most important and monumental necropolis of Heropolis and of the whole Asia Minor extends for nearly two kilometers. Look at the tomb, it's elevated. How did they that? Long time ago. Interesting. So this is another uh, type of tombs.
look at that one with second floor. Let's find out what's inside. It's dark. Let's go inside. Oh, there's the first floor and the second floor. Which one you like when you take the picture? Okay, which one? Yeah, I'm coming this way. Anyway. Lots of tombs in here destroyed from the earthquake before. It's amazing how things they did to Hong Kong a long, long time ago. Yeah. Beautiful. This one is. Now I will show you some of the tombs they had long time ago and let's start with the tumulus. So this is the tumulus, consisting of a low cylindric cog drum made of travertine slab supporting an earth cone. Let's see what's inside. So there's two flight of steps lead to the antechamber of the subterranean funerary chamber. Then it will be covered by a barrel vault with simple charbels along the walls. The entrance to the chamber was closed off with a stone slab. The building was built in the late Hellenistic age and inscriptions of the 2nd century AD refers to the last occupant. Look at that. The next tomb is the tomb from 2nd century AD. As you can see, the tomb is surrounded by a wall and with sarcophagi. Look at that. This tomb is from the 3rd century AD. Look how they made it. It's different style.
this tomb were built during 2nd to 3rd centuries AD. The tomb is built on a high platform that compensates for the difference in level of the land behind. Inside the chamber are three simple charl beds arranged along the walls and a very deep ossuary. On the roof slabs, which jut out a long way, are two sarcophagi, two inscriptions beside the door, and the inscription on the slab that closed it, now in the museum, refer to the successive occupants, including Eutychus Pompeius, who left 100 denarii to the Association of Wool Washers for the periodic decoration of the tomb. These tombs are from the second half of the second century AD. The tomb lies on the left-hand side of the road and is enclosed by a perimeter wall. It rests on a base with a three steps with a bench place in front of it. Inside are three beds and the ossuary. On the roof, a sarcophagus, broken as a result of an earthquake, bears an inscription mentioning the occupant, Elaeus Apollinarius, and his wife, Neratia Apollonius. On the facade is an inscription of great interest which refers to the punishment inflicted upon those who violate the sepal tree as well as the usual fines. So this tomb was the tomb beginning of the first century AD. Building with a roof sloping on both sides and a particularly fine facade, the benches, the door, and the cornices are also characterized by expert craftsmanship. The sepal tree belonging to a Jewish family has a high podium built on a rack and a quadrangular funerary chamber. Below this is an violated subterranean space with deep coal bird and the object belonging to the 31 individuals on the floor were terracotta urns containing human bones the last together with small funerary objects. The tomb, that I will show you is the tomb of the gladiators from 2nd to 3rd centuries AD. The tomb takes its name from the travertine slab above the entrance bearing images linked to the gladiatorial combat from the left. An amphora for the oil offered as a prize to the victor, a trident for combat, the circular shield. It is characterized by two faces. The first has a rectangular plan with beds arranged along all the walls. In the second phase, the new facade was built near the entrance. The short sides were reinforced with a new well supporting the sarcophagi. just keep walking there's so much tomb that you can see different style And this road leads to the uh, other end and imagine this cemetery is two kilometers long so it's very huge. How they did that long time ago with no modern technologies.
and add the thing. Look at this one. It's nice. Let's check this one. What's inside? Surprise! Nothing. But look at that. Two to three levels. Very nice. How they lived it long time ago, how many people pulling the rope to put that slabs in there and make it, you know, even. Yeah, there's a small window there. Look at that slabs as a uh, for the rope. It's heavy and it's very, very heavy. So thousands of people maybe hundreds pulling the rope for it that's another sarcopagi there look at that sarcopagi elevated on the ground now almost at the end of the cemetery or necropolis <laughs> İlk, hadi e, böyle altı çeyrek, altı buçuk da arasında gelebilir misin şey ya? Yeah, different. Yeme, yeme, lots yeme, of yeme, history, yeme, yeme, lots of yeme. knowledge, lots of information. Yeme, yeme işte evde yiyeceğiz yani. I'm glad I visited here. Ha, sen görüyor musun? Ha, köyde deme, işte orası, köyde mi, buradayım. So ha, much to explore, evde, so much ben... to know about ha. it. Tamam oğlum, hadi. Ee, biz şey doğru, o kapıya yaklaşmayız biz. Aşk. Şu, garayit kapısını. Uh -huh. tamam. Or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or, or,